This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital and uh, I'm not much of a painter, so when I had to figure out my backdrop, I had to come up with something different. Welcome back everybody. So today we're talking about backdrops and I have the issue of not being able to paint landscapes very well. I think most of us probably end up having that issue and I still want a really good backdrop and I don't also want to have to pay for a photo backdrop because those things can get quite pricey. So by the way, I have used a photo backdrop in the past. You can check that link right up here as well as at the end of the video. But today I'm going to give you a very simple and easy method for making a backdrop that'll make your model railroad look good. I promise you anyone can do this. Let's get started. For this tutorial, you're going to need your background material of choice and several matte or satin finish spray paints, including a sky blue color, a white, a lighter vegetative green, a darker vegetative green, whatever you can find. Typically the camouflage colors work really well. And if you can't find these in matte colors, which I had an issue with, you can use a clear matte or satin finish spray that can go over as a clear coat at the end that will dull it out. You're also gonna need a big section of cardboard for this as well. For this backdrop, I'm going to paint it on a one foot by four foot section of masonite or tempered hardboard. And this is left over from when I did my fascia panels. You can check that video out up here, as well as at the end of the video. The first thing that I'm going to do is cover the entire fascia panel with light blue paint, kind of a sky blue color. You wanna try and get a matte or satin finish for the paint, but if you have a gloss finish, it's not the end of the world. You can just use a satin clear coat at the end. And I actually had to do this because of supply issues. It was very hard for me to find anything but glossy paint. So you're gonna go ahead and cover this entire thing in blue paint. Next, we need to add a little bit of interest into the sky. And for that, I'm using some white spray paint to do some clouds. And I'm doing just some light, quick bursts as I am rapidly moving my hand across just to get some interest in the sky. I'm not trying to go for specific shapes of clouds, but this will just give the air of there's a few clouds somewhere in the sky and give a nice little look for that. Okay, here is where the cardboard comes in. I'm gonna take this cardboard and I'm going to cut it up in the shape of a rolling hill. Since I like to model things in the Appalachian Mountains, I'm going to have this rolling hill template right here. And this is what I'm gonna to use to make my hills with the paint. Now, if you've ever seen the mountains, you know that as you go back further, the mountains get a bit more faded and get a little bit hazier. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna use a slightly lighter green than what I'm going to use in the foreground. So I'm going to go ahead and lay the template flat and then I'm going to begin spray painting this. And I wanna start off by spray painting with the edge pressed flat and I'm going to be spray painting away from the cardboard. This way, if there's any spill, it really gets directed into the area that I'm going to paint rather than spray painting towards the edge and any, any extra that would get away would go on to the board where I don't want it to go. I spray paint the edges first and then I fill in the entire hillside. Now you can see that when I pull the template away, I get a really nice clean looking hill right there. I then lay the template over on the other side. I'm going to do two hills of this color and I make it slightly different, slightly higher up versus the other hill and I use the exact same process, spraying away from the edge when I'm doing the edge and doing the edge first and then filling in the entire hillside.
And now I have my background hills that are going to be in there, but I need to add a little bit something extra to this. So I need to let them dry first. Now, once they've dried a little bit, I come back with the white and I'm just doing this very, very light dusting, these brief bursts of paint right here, just to give a little bit of a haze that's going to be that appearance on this. So we want the little haze to be hanging over the mountains. If you've ever seen the Blue Ridge Mountains or anywhere, something like that, like the Alleghenies, you know there's a little bit of haze that sits in the valleys of these mountains. And that is what I am emulating here with just these little bursts of white spray paint. Not a crazy amount, don't want to coat it, just a little bit. Once that's dry, I come back with the foreground mountains and I'm going to lower them just a little bit and I'm going to be using a darker shade of green for this. In this case, it's a hunter green level and I'm using, once again, the exact same technique, spraying away from that edge and just gotta make sure sometimes that the paint actually works and go ahead and get those hillsides in. I'm doing the hill in the middle first because it is the one that is going to be the most pronounced. Once that first hill is done, I make a slightly higher hill on this side using the exact same technique. It's pretty much just rinse and repeat, guys. And then I do one more hill on the opposite side. Now, once that is done and dry, there's still a little bit to, it looks still a little bit too fake. I, I know it's not gonna look perfectly real, but I want it to at least blend in a little bit. So I come back with the white spray paint and I just go with a little bit of a haze effect like I did, just not nearly as much as what I did on the other mountains, but just a little bit, just to ease off on the green. Okay, so as I said before, I had to use some gloss paints on this because of supply chain issues and it's hard to find satin and matte paints. But the way that I'm solving this issue so that it's not overly glossy is I'm grabbing a satin clear coat right here and you can also use a matte clear coat and I'm completely coating the entire piece once everything is dry. This will take off a good amount of the shine once you get it on your backdrop and leave it with a pretty solid matte finish. And here is the finished result put on the back of MRR1 so that you guys can see what it looks like on a model railroad. Personally, I'm pretty happy with this. It's not the most detailed backdrop, but it definitely gets the job done and adds so much to the model railroad. A good backdrop can do a lot for a model railroad, and this simple technique I hope will help a bunch of you who have previously been intimidated about painting a backdrop to make your own to help make your model railroad a lot better. I want to say a big thank you to all of my patrons. They are listed right here. You can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. A lot of cool stuff going on over there. If you want some more information on scenery tutorials or layout updates or the video I talked about with the photo backdrop, I'll have that linked right after this at the end of the video. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading. Painter. So when I was trying to... Oh my god which by the way, you can see how I installed my last photo backdrop right up here as well as at the end of the video. And none of them, as I said. So um, I, I've tried photo drop. I can't talk today.